Cassandra, she's a babe. Schwing? Schwing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jackie Green. We're at Wolfgang's Vault. Uh, we're going to do a song. It's called Gone Wandering. Another day is coming and gone And I can't figure what went around Mockingbird is mocking me She locked me out and lost the key And I've gone wandering again I'm out the door, I'm walking by myself Down the street like the night before And I should be home in bed but the notion in my head is telling me to ramble on Every day is just a dream Stuck inside the great machine You work your job, spend your pay And no one hears the prayers you pray And I've gone wandering again I'm out the door by myself down the street like the night before and I should be home in bed but the notion in my head is telling me to ramble on I live 
live right here with you Walk the same earth you do I don't believe that a world so different I live right here with you Yes, I I live right here with you Your twisted heart Is a cruel and wonderful thing It tears me apart
Angie with Crowd Addy Magazine, and I'm here at the vault with Jackie Green. Um, so, just to kind of get started, uh, you've been playing music for a long time uh, as a pretty young child. Do you remember the first song you wrote and how old you were? Uh, I do. I don't remember what it was called, but I, I used to write it, um, a lot of, I guess, like like little tunes and stuff on the piano. And I, I was probably like 10, maybe, 10 or 11, and I, I had this. Uh, I had this song about um, about uh, roasting marshmallows on a campfire. Nice. You know, <laughs> and do you consider piano your primary instrument now? And I don't. Not piano? really. I, I don't. I don't really have a. I don't think I really have a primary instrument. Um, I like piano, guitar. Um, I, I actually really like stuff that I don't don't play. I don't really like I, li I like to play the drums. And you play the, the mandolin too, right? The mandolin. Yeah, that's because I'm not very good at the mandolin, so I like to play it. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Um, and then you were, you know, essentially discovered by um, the local Sacramento label, Dig. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that process, how they found, discovered your music? Well, it was uh, uh, my manager, Marty, who, who's been my manager for over a decade now. He, um, I started playing open mic nights and coffee shops and whatnot. Um, and uh, uh, we had a mutual friend named Sal Valentino, who was in a, in a group called the, the Bo Brummels back in the, in the 60s. And he told Marty to, to come and to watch me play, and he did. And um, we sort of started as just like a like a friendship. Moved into, well, it moved into me actually moving into his house when I didn't have a place to live. That's a which close is, friendship. Which yeah. is like which is like the best thing a manager can do. Really, is like, oh man, you need a place to live. You can you can crash on my couch. That's like really what a manager is for. <laughs> right. Like I, they, don't you, they, do don't, you know? they don't they don't they don't tell you that, but really like you know the fifteen percent. Is, is great and all, but if they ain't letting you sleep on their couch, it ain't worth it, you know? That's, <laughs> yeah, that should be a tagline. That's like tag standard, line. yeah, totally. Nice. Um, you've been um, called a blues prodigy. Do you identify as a blues musician? You play a lot uh, I, I, I do a little bit, but I, um, I, got, I got tagged that really, really early on. I, and I never, back then, I never really thought I was, I, I, I guess, I, you know, I really love blues music. I really do. Um, and I got, t uh, that tag came, came about pretty strongly because I would, you know, I got to go on tour with like Buddy Guy and B.B. King and Taj Mahal and, and all these like, you know, like, you know, granddaddy blues artists, you know, but um, really I'm just like a white kid, you know, and, uh, and I love and I revere that music so much that uh, I don't consider myself that good, you know, I'm not really that, I'm not really good enough to be, to be that, but People people say whatever they want to say, you know. What was they, it like touring with such legends at such a young age? Well, the only time I ever vomited before a show was um, <laughs> was when I, the first show I opened for BB King was at the Palace in Louisville. Only once. That's good. First time, first <laughs> yeah. and only time. I was so nervous. I went and bought because I'd seen BB King and his band play before, 
and this is what I was like 23 or 24 back then and so I'd seen them before when I was in high school uh, and I noticed that oh well BB King wears like the special suit and then the band wears regular like black suit you know I was like oh cool I, so I went and I bought myself a black suit and I wore it for that whole tour like because I just thought it would be cool to like make it look all like streamlined totally. and everything and um I mean, so that's how seriously I, I took that, that, and that's the only time I've ever done that. Mm-hmm. You know, otherwise I'll just wear jeans and whatever. But um, so that whole period, right huh? Looking pretty dapper right now. Oh well, thank you. I have I have some mustard on these jeans. I don't <laughs> think it'll show up on the camera, but I had a, you know, I had my lunch before I came here, and um, I never road, get you know? <laughs> I never get napkins. You know, it's just I use my shirt and whatever. It's like, you know. it's rock and roll. <laughs> it's that's no, it's called being a guy. <laughs> Which is like, you know, like I was thinking the other day, I was always like, I always play, like on Christmas Eve, I always play um, Kind of Blue, Miles Davis record, on Christmas Eve, because I always feel like it's a Christmas Eve recording for some reason. Does everybody, anybody else feel like that? Miles I, Davis seems like it goes, yeah. But I mean, just that particular record seems very like gray and like, like Christmas Eve. And then it's great because that's all I listen to all day and I never have to hear it again for the whole rest of the year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's for such- those traditions, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those traditions. That's great. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your new record, um, Till the Light Comes? Like, you know, sort of the record, like, where did you record it? Uh, we recorded it here in San Francisco. Uh, Tim Bloom, myself, and um, our, our partner, David Simon Baker, we have a studio in the Mission, uh, which we've had for about four years now. So we did, it's cool to me because it's the, it's the first record I've done of my, of my stuff that's, that's all been done in like our own place you know we didn't really have any like outside label people poking in or anything we sort of just did it on our own time and um it's sort of like it 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 sort of feels relaxed Mm -hmm. you know to me in that in that way so that's great how's the response been to it i mean it's different than other things you put out yeah i don't know you know i once the record's done and it goes out in the world I, i usually like for about two two or three weeks or up to a month after it initially comes out, I'm concerned with how it's doing. After that, after that, I don't care because it's, uh, you know, you're just on to something else, and it and it does whatever it does. And you know, I I, I bet it's it's probably sold like it's probably sold more than 20 copies, but probably less than like 200,000. I would say. A couple more than 20, yeah. But not very, not, not a lot more than 20. I don't, I don't think. I think you're selling yourself short, but. <laughs> Um, how has the tour, touring been this winter? Uh, well, we, we've had most of the winter off. We did, a, we, did a long, we did a really long summer thing with Government Mule, which was fantastic. Um, wonderful, wonderful band. Like the, the crew is great. The band is great, obviously. And uh, we, we played, like, you know, mostly, mostly the south, and it's, like, incredibly hot and humid. And, you know, like... Like if you like if you've never been to Memphis or like Mobile, or Birmingham, in like the middle of the summer, then you haven't experienced true heat. Yeah, you know it's hard to play those clubs and it's yeah. like it's really bad. hot. Um, and so we did that, and then we did the we did pretty much all through summer and fall, and then we've had a lot of the winter off. We did. Um, I just turned thirty, actually. Believe it or Happy not. Happy birthday! Thank you, thank you. Uh, and we did uh, the last show we did was here in San Francisco at the Fillmore. 30th birthday party which was a lot of fun nice Some um, I know a lot of our uh, readers are probably interested in your work with Phil and friends mm-hmm. um, and I understand that you weren't uh, really that familiar with the dad before Phil contacted you that's true Can yeah. you tell me sort of how he found your music and how well I think be? Phil probably tells the story a little bit better but um, from what I understand is that what I remember I remember being at Bonnaroo and Someone saying, "Oh, yeah, Phil Lesh is here to see. He's in. He's in the audience. He's he's watching." And I was like, "Really?" I mean, I, I knew who he was, but I wasn't wasn't really like all that super familiar with Grateful Dead stuff. And I was like, oh, "Okay." And then I, I don't, you know, I don't hear from him or for a while. And then I it, and literally out of nowhere, he calls me on the phone, and he says, "Jackie, <laughs> this is Phil. I would like you to come to the studio and." Let's make some songs together and let's jam. I was just like, okay, you know. <laughs> really can't I, say no to that. Yeah, I was like, right. I, well, kind of. At first, I was like, this isn't. Who is this? You know? Yeah, that's right. Who is this imposter? But it, it was cool. And um, and 
so he came out to actually our studio and we hung out and um, I actually you know I I will say and I I, I want to go on record saying that I bought Phil dinner the first time <laughs> he's bought me dinner ever since then it's a good investment you got the first one right? <laughs> it's a great investment uh, but I, I think he I think he he heard he heard uh, I'm so gone or one of the songs that he's playing on the radio mm -hmm. and uh, he he liked it and that's that's how he found found out and um and no, I had like, you know, I knew like, you know, like Working Man's Dead and American Beauty, but I didn't really know. The breadth of the catalog. A lot, yeah, and I didn't realize how far it went, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's such wonderful music. And, you know, to this day, I find myself, you know, finding really cool new things to learn about, about that music. And, you know, the other day, I'll put on like Mars Hotel, which is like my favorite dead record right now. And just sort of like just lay down and listen to it. It's really, it's great stuff. You know? Obviously, the, everybody knows that. I was a little late. On, <laughs> in the, Usually when people find them, you know, they get in like on one record, then it opens up the entire right. you know, catalog. Yeah. What were some of the challenges to playing that music to these, you know, long time deadheads that... Well, I think, you know, it's be, interesting because I think the biggest challenge and, but also like maybe what, maybe what was, what was actually cool about it was like, I was, it was sort of my job to sing most of the songs, a lot of the songs. And a lot of the times, like I'd be the the guy. I'm the guy who's singing them, and I'm the guy who knows them the least. <laughs> right. You know, out of probably everybody there, like including especially the audience. And it's like you got that killer voice, though. So. But I think I think I think what made it kind of cool is that it was a little bit. It was like refreshing. A little bit it was fresh, because it's like I'm. This is like it's almost like a new song now because it's new to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you know I think that I think that worked out really well. It brings new way. life into it. Yeah, for sure. Totally. Well, can you, I mean, kind of just to wrap up, do you want to speak to any projects or anything you have on the horizon for 2011? Uh, well, probably a lot of touring. Um, hopefully, uh, going to. I've been writing a lot, of, a lot of new stuff, so hopefully maybe do, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to ever make uh, another record or not. Um, as far as like a record, I might be, I might be um, done making records. Really? But uh, yeah, I Why? know. It's, well, I'm, we can talk about that later, but... Uh, but just we'll just we'll just leave it at that, um, and you know take that how you want it, people. And Good. some people are be like, great man, I can't stand his records. I don't I don't want him to ever make another record. But it doesn't mean I'm not gonna like make a bunch of songs and throw them out there. Yeah, so, there you go. It's you like know. the way of the future anyway. So yeah. So. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, no and problem. the session was great. And thanks for spending some can time. I my, can I have my hat back now? Sure. Okay. Yes. Thank you. you know, I was gonna thank steal you. it, but all right. Cool. Thanks a lot. That's it.